Hi everybody and welcome back. I've been tying shrimps ever since I started fly fishing and uh, my shrimps have evolved all the way. Um, what I would like to tie with you today is uh, now where my shrimps has gone today. They has to be durable, fly well, ride well in the water and look like a shrimp. So I call this the pro shrimp. Uh, we will be using um, some pro angel hair as, as body and, and a shrimp shell on top. Um, and I'll take you all along the different steps. So hang tight and uh, let's start. Now for most of my saltwater flies I use a GSP 70 denier tying thread and uh, I want to have it as a good foundation for the fly so I keep the thread flat, cut away the snippet and then continue to go just a little bit down the bend of the hook. This is where we will start our fly. So we make a dubbing loop. Again, remember to go on the inside of the wire to keep the threads tight. Measure the loop length. Secure with two wraps, two wraps around the loop and locking it into place. And go forward a little bit. So, time for some dubbing. And uh, here I use Pro Angel Hair Standard in the, the color pearl blue. And I'll just cut out a little bit of one corner. Take out the amount I need for the entire fly. Like this. And then just pull the fibers, making it into an even mass of dubbing. And then I cut it in half. That is just to shorten the fibers. Otherwise, the fibers will very easily get trapped. So, pulling it apart, mixing it back together. So that... Now I take approximately one-fourth of the amount, putting it into the dubbing loop, pulling slightly in the dubbing twister. So this will make it very easy for me when the threads are lying just beside each other to manipulate the dubbing into the profile I want. Here I want an even profile. So spin it, just if some fibers get trapped uh, at, at the hook point, just remove that. Now spin it, and when it gets fairly tight, just give it a Velcro work over to pull out the fibers. Now as you see, the center core of the loop is becoming very thin. And this is quite important when we want a lot of fibers going out from a very limited point. Wrapping it tight, pulling the fibers back, and wrap it. Now for the first wraps, we will just place them just beside each other, pulling the fibers back. Just wrap it. You, can, you can almost pull as hard as you like here, because the GSP thread is so strong. Now I want to go up again on the dubbing that we have just placed, making it into a more massive bulk. A little bit of Velcro brush. Pull fibers back. A little bit there. And go forward again so that your excess exit point will be approximately five millimeters in front of where you started. So. Okay, just locking the last wrap down. Go backward with the thread and 
blocking the loop. And securing it by pulling the loop back. Off it goes. A little bit of Velcro for pulling out the last fibers. Now look at how vertically they stand out from the hook shank. Now this gives a very light but still a quite vol voluminous end of the shrimp. So we take some bucktail here in the color chartreuse and here it's important that you don't take too much because otherwise it will dominate the fly too much. Cut it off. Remove the fluff from the bottom. And we need approximately double the hook length. Place it on top. Now the loop between your fingers and pull it straight down. Locking wrap. Just putting it into place. Just grip it with your nail. Now see how it spreads out nicely. And securing. Now I want the bucktail ends to be a part of my, how can you say, underbody. So I'll leave those on top of the shank. Securing. Go back to make it compact. Now bucktail has a certain amount of air to it, so this will help a little bit with the with the fly riding right in the water. Cut away. Just going forward a little bit. So now uh, I need to tie in what is eventually going to be the legs of the fly, of the shrimp. Um, and here I use a Soft patch. Just that look nice. Now I need to remove the fluff from the bottom since it's the clean fibers I want. So I'll just rip those off. Cut it. Now we're gonna tie in the legs later. But uh, we want to park it until then. So what I'll do is that I will place it on top. Securing. Going back to the, what is the new exit point. Just securing it. Now here you need to pull hard. Looking so that it comes out just underneath the hook. Going forward a little bit with the thread. Now it's time for the second loop. Again, the inside of the dubbing twister. Now this loop has to be slightly longer than the first one, approximately 15 centimeters. So what I'll do is I'll measure the 15 centimeters. Again, going two times over, two times round, locking. See how the exit of the thread is so tight to each other? And parking the loop. So for the ribbing, I'm going to use a standard monofilament fishing line, 0 0.16 millimeter. Extremely strong, extremely inexpensive, and it's almost invisible when it's going through the through the shrimp. So, just taking that round, but don't go all the way back to the new exit point. Leave approximately two to three millimeters. This is for securing the shell and the legs when we finish off the fly. So, just go forward, pull them. Mono back, give that some wraps. 
so that it won't come off. Cut away the snippet. Now, here's a cheap material. Um, this is standard sock wool, three stranded, and we're going to use this to create the under part of the body for the shrimps. Now, the majority of mass of body on this fly needs to go on top. This will help the fly ride a little bit better and also have a more natural appearance to it. So I'll just tie it in at the center, going on one side, going forward on the other side, like this, going back, and then I'll take just locking it. Make sure that it sits on top. Now one of the snippets, pull that back. That goes in line with the two underneath. This will create more height than width. And just go forward with it. two, three millimeters before the eye, lock it down. Now take the remaining part and untwist it so that the, the strands will become wider and then just go forward to create a more round shape. And then wind back. We don't want to go all the way to the eye because that will make a very bulky ending of the fly. So we'll just five, six millimeters before the eye, cut it off. And then we're going to secure it, or how can you say, wrap it, just giving it some of that strong GSP thread going back and forth. Here you, you don't need to put them very tight besides each other. So now here you see that there's a more material on top of the hook than at the bottom. So now it's time for the, rem the remaining dubbing. So open the loop, put everything in the middle. Now what we want here is a little bit of tapered body so that the majority of the dubbing mass will be again uh, up against the the bend of the hook and then it kind of tapers out to become almost nothing at one end. So a lot of uh, dubbing at first and then it tapers out. Start spinning. Make sure that everything is away so it doesn't get trapped in the in the fibers. Now you see how massive that dubbing is but it's going to get a lot thinner when we pull out fibers. So work it with the velcro brush We want the center part of the loop to be not super thin as with the first loop, but not too thick either. See how it tapers nicely. So I'll just give it a little bit more. And then make sure that the Ribbing is pulled forward for the first two wraps. Fibers back. And then we start to go around. Now make sure that the ribbing is going in front of the first wraps. See how the ribbing comes out in the, in the front? A little bit of Velcro. sure that nothing is caught. Another wrap, keeping sure that the ribbing is, is going on the front. And now we want to pull the ribbing back and out and down. And just keeping in one nice wrap, a little bit more Velcro. 
now we want to open up our wraps as we go forward. This is because we want the monofilament to go down between the wraps, pulling the legs up and the shell down into these uh, open wraps. So you just go all the way forward. And as you get closer to the eye of the hook, if the dubbing loop is a little bit thick, you can just unwind it. A little bit of Velcro pulling out some of those trapped fibers. Just pulling those away. And then retightens it and it becomes very slim and makes a nice ending to the fly. So pulling back and wrapping and locking with the, th with the thread. Pull back and secure, and trim away, and secure it. Now this is one of the points where you don't want the dubbing loop to loosen. Give it a little bit of work over with the Velcro brush again, making sure that everything stands out from the hook, because now we're going to trim it a little bit. We're going to trim it on top to leave room for the shell and that no fibers coming out where we don't want them to come out. So you just trim that tight on the top. This pulling down on the fibers. And then we're going to trim the long angel hair at the bottom in a nice 45 degree angle. This will allow the ribbing to go in between the fibers instead of just catching them. And then we're going to split it. You're going to, uh, here I use my scalpel for, you can use your needle or anything, and just divide it into two and pull it down the sides. Just pull that hard because now we're going to pull forward the soft patch feather. Just to make sure that the fibers is going directly out from the stem. And then just locking it. And here you have to be very precise that it's going exactly underneath the eye of the hook. Secure it, remove the rest of the feather, and trim if there's any fibers that has become caught in the, in the, in the last few wraps there. Okay, so now we're at the point where we need to choose the shrimp shell, which is going on top of the shrimp. And uh, to make it a little bit more easy, I've made such a sheet. And this kind of shows how many different designs and sizes there is in the program. So, you of course take your desired hook. Now when I place it on top of the shells, you can see that from the bottom of the V at the paddles, to the bend of the eye, I want that to be aligned with the eye of the shrimp shell. So this is a bit too small. Now if I try the size medium, here I can see that the eye and the bend of the hook is perfectly aligned. The shrimp shells um, comes packed like this. Um, and uh, yeah, there are a lot of different sizes and a lot of, of different uh, uh, designs. So just go to my website and uh, you can find all the models there and descriptions about how big they are, etc. So, but um, okay, so let's take one of the shells off. Um, now, before I put it on, I will prepare it a little bit. I need to have the, I like to have the eyes domed a little bit. So for that, I have some UV resin. 
and the torch. I put just a little drop of UV resin on top of each eye. This will give a beautiful 3D effect. And then just to give it a little bit of light. So what you do when you when you remove it is that you just take your needle and you just just put it in at the edge and you just press it down and then it will break the small detachment points and here you have your shell with the nice domed eyes. Okay, let's mount it up. Everything sits nice. And then you secure it with flat thread. Remember to counterspin once in a while. Making sure that everything is in line. Then I take my monofilament ribbing, just pulling it gently out from the, the bottom. Locking down the shrimp shell with the monofilament ribbing, making sure that it's on top. And then I just start to go forward. I flip my fly. Makes it a bit easier to go around the hacker fibers when, uh, when you go down. And then I'll just zigzag my way down through the body. Now, what this does is that this will make the fly incredibly strong and uh, add segmentation to the body. Just look at how that hacker stem is being pulled down through the open dubbing loop wraps. So all the way forward, flip the fly, making sure that there's not a ton of fibers caught underneath the monofilament ribbing tight. And then lock it with the tying thread. Pull the ribbing back to secure it. And give it a nice little head. Remove the monofilament ribbing. If there's any fibers caught underneath the rib, just pull them down. Now a little bit of Velcro, just to pull any looped fibers out. Now this is a tough fly, so you don't have to be gentle with it. Just checking the profile, everything looks nice. This will fly beautifully through the air. The dome dies look good too. And then just trim the haggle so that the front part of the shrimp has short legs like the real shrimp has. Now everything looks good. Now it's time to finish off the head. A little bit of saba gap on the thread. and just wrap it and you will have a very strong head that will really be able to take a beating at the open seas. So making sure that the eye is open and the fly is done. Now that went Pretty okay. Now, as you get used to tying these types of shrimps, it, it gets easier. And you can simplify it a little bit if you want to. You can leave out the legs just cut, cut in the dubbing, but I like the contrast. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it and uh, found a little bit of inspiration and wanted to tie your own shrimps. So um, stay tuned and uh, 
remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching.